right. So, can you see my slides? <laughs> Everyone is muted, so I'm like, <laughs> this thing. <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, all right, good. Uh, so this, this is the fourth chapter of uh, the Advanced R book. And um, it's, it's about subsetting. We, I was interested in this chapter, same for Shell. Uh, we started to do it together. So I'm going to present the first, the first part of it. Then Shell will, will finish up with that. Uh, please let me know when I clock about 15 minutes. Or oh, I don't want to exceed that. All right, so this is the outline. I'm going to do uh, the first subsections, uh, 4.1 until 4.3, then show we'll continue with the last two, 4.4 and 4.5. All right, just, just a little bit of uh, the, the introduction of the chapter. Uh, but basically, um, our, our subsetting operators are fast and powerful. Um, I cannot really say why. Uh, because I feel like when you say that you need to compare to other languages, but well, I love R, so I have no complaints. Um, so, the, the, but the, the, the three things you need to really um, have a good grasp of are, uh, first of all, the, 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 the ways of subsetting, the three sub, uh, subsetting operators, that is the double block bracket, the single block bracket, and the upper hand, which we are going to look at in detail later on. And then you, you also need to know that um, if you have uh, different um, data types, for example, uh, vectors and, and, and lists and, and, um, and factors, matrices, data frame that we looked at in chapter three, uh, then you, you need to think about how you're going to be able to subset and possibly it's going to be different ways of subsetting those different types. Uh, then of, of course, if you're going to deal with data, uh, manipulating data, you, you might need to think about how to use the subsetting and uh, assign and, and assignment operator. Uh, this we might, we, we might encounter in a few examples or something like that, uh, uh, but, or, or even later on in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the book. All right, so one, one thing you need to look at to also think about is uh, how to know what to subset. Right, and uh, you could do this by either viewing the, the data um, in, in, in R Studio using the view command, uh, or you could also use the structure uh, command to see how, how, how the data is, is the content of the data, for example, the, the, the column names, especially. All right, so just, just a, few, a few tips to, to, to keep in mind or to, to introduce ourselves what we're going to do. So diving into, into, into the chapter, the main content is about selecting multiple elements. And the multiple elements basically here are the different data types uh, that, that you're going to, 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 to be encountering in R. So the first one we're going to look at is the atomic vectors. And uh, so you can, for atomic vectors, you can, you can use the block bracket to select the number of elements. And just, just a few examples, I'm going to give you, we're going to, I'm going to list uh, six examples which are in the book. Uh, I stuck to the examples in the book just for, the, I found them very simple, so I didn't think about complicating uh, things. So for example, you could use, uh, if you have um, um, a, a, a vector, uh, which is X in this case, with four elements, or four, four numbers, uh, you could actually subset it using positive numbers in form of uh, a vector itself. So you could select the first, the, the, the third and, and, and the first element of, of, of that vector. At the same time, if you actually use the negative version of that, or you use, uh, you put a, a minus in front of that vector, you could actually remove them and select the rest of the elements. So as, as you could see, you could select 3.3 and 3.3 and 2.1. But if you put a minus, you only select the other two elements. At the same time, you could use logical vectors. I think this is really important in terms of uh, uh, subsetting data sets or uh, cr cr uh, creating uh, new, new, new variables, stuff like that. Uh, so for example, if you look at uh, this, this part here where you have x greater than three, 
it's basically going to, to only select the values of the vector, in this case, which is greater than three. So it creates the logical, a logical vector of true or false. Then it only remains with the true. Um, but one, one thing to note when you're dealing with, uh, with, with, with subsetting, of, uh, here they use an example of, of, of the true and false, but the logical uh, operators. Uh, if you have um, a logical vector, which is, for example, the first one here, uh, true or false only, but we know that our, the length of our vector is actually four. So what it does, it uh, um, expands the, the, the subsetting vector, which is just two, to become the length of four. So sort of like copies at, at, until it reaches the, the length of four. And uh, when, when it does that, then it could actually, it, it can use that subset, that, that uh, created subsetting vector to subset the whole vector. Uh, this is uh, quite uh, a little bit not easy to, to understand, probably in the beginning, but we also see one of uh, uh, the exercises, which is talking about this in, in, in form of, for example, using NA or something like that. Um, I personally, I don't, I, oops. I personally, I like having control over things, so I, I, I prefer not to use this kind of thing, but you never know it's going to be important. Another important thing is uh, if, if you subset with an empty, with, with, with nothing inside the block brackets. And uh, what, the, what this does is it returns everything of that vector. So right now I'm going to just give you a placeholder and I call this the everything selector because we're going to return to this and I, I couldn't figure out a way of referring to it. Uh, so everything selector, if you have nothing in the block brackets, returns everything. So the last uh, two uh, ways of, of, of subsetting an atomic vector is if you have, for example, a, a zero inside the block brackets that returns the numeric zero uh, we'll have to discuss this one here. I couldn't really explain um, why you turn the numeric zero, really. Maybe I could pause here and find out if someone has an idea about why that, why we have that behavior. Anyone? Please go back to the previous slide. The x vector. Okay, the x vector. This one here. Okay. So it's just returning the type of whatever the vector is. I'm trying to think of it in terms of the vector diagrams we saw last week. You know how it was kind of like the pointers, and then the little boxes. Um, if you remember the like thing he was using last week. So I'm wondering if zero is just basically, because our index is from one, if the zero is then just pointing back to the reference, maybe, being like, this is the type okay. of the vector, maybe. Because oh, okay. if, you, if you changed it to like a character vector or, a, or an integer vector rather than a numeric, it would give you integer zero. In so, oh, okay. If you yeah, I wonder, like the, I wonder if that's how they deal with it, is that basically what you're doing is when you point to anything inside one of the indexes that are valid and then the zero is like pointing to the thing itself. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know, that's, Could that's be. my made up version. Uh -huh. that's the I was start. also thinking about that, it's like based on how um, the zero based one based index same thing. Um, so maybe it's giving us the least possible value, but then um, based on what Andy has said, what if the x vector was a character vector? What will x zero give us? Will it still? Give I think us it would give zero? character zero. Or That's character that. zero. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, Okay, so just, just to finalize uh, this part here, uh, you could actually also subset the, the, the vectors uh, 
in this case, named vectors with names of, 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 of the elements of that vector. So as you could see here, um, I, I created uh, um, uh, a, vec a named vector Y uh, and gave, gave, gave the names as the first four letters. Um, you, could, you could actually subset uh, that vector Y uh, by listing the names, uh, any name that you want to select. In this case, only B, C, and A. So it's pretty, pretty interesting, but uh, one thing to know is that we might, you, you always have, since we know that the vectors are linked to, to the matrices and the data frames and the list, everything is kind of transferable to those. Moving on to the list, one thing we need to note is, our, is that uh, we specify the same way as we, we subset the list in the same way as we are subsetting the atomic vectors. And uh, we use um, the, the, the same um, subsetting, I've forgotten what they are called. Uh, we use the same things to, to subset, uh, which are the upper zone, the block brackets, and the double block brackets. And uh, just, just to know the difference between those, uh, a single block bracket is going to return a list. But if you want to go deeper in those lists, then we are, we're always going to use the double block brackets and the upper zone. And uh, just have some, some, some examples here about um, also how to actually, if we move from the list and go to the matrices and arrays, we could, um, first of all, we need to know that we are moving from a one dimensional space to uh, a two-dimensional and greater space. And everything is kind of like a generalization. So we have to, general, we have to generalize from a one-dimension to a two-dimension to a three-dimension, four-dimension, like, like that. So uh, there are three ways of subsetting uh, matrices and arrays. The first one is using multiple vectors. And multiple in the sense that if you have, you, you supply with the row vector and the column vector in a sense. But uh, just the, the first question it would be, if you look at this first example on the left, where we have a one to two comma nothing, uh, is where, 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 why do we call this multiple? But the thing is that, remember what I told about, what I, what I, what I talked about uh, the everything selector? So it, it's sort of what, 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 what is being done here. And that's why it is uh, kind of, was kind of important to be shown previously. So it selects everything and this will basically give you the same result if you, if you say uh, one to two comma one to three to give you the same thing because you'll be selecting all the columns. Um, and yeah, and at the same time, it should be the same thing as if, if you include the, the column names, I believe. I haven't tried that, but I think it should be the same thing. Um, okay, so and of course, we also saw we also saw a possibility of using um, uh, using uh, logical logical vectors, true or false, and the same thing that we can do here uh, for the same thing that we can do here for for for, for, for the matrices. So no matter, for me, what I do here personally, I, I I think about vectors. I mean matrices and and, and data frames as vectors. So in, in that sense, I, I don't have to think about what I can do on matrices and vectors. I only think about what I can do on, I mean, I don't, think, I don't have to think about what I can do on matrices and data frames. I only think about what I can do on vectors and everything becomes a bit easier. All right, so the other two methods of subsetting matrices and arrays is you could apply, you could supply um, uh, a single vector. This is quite weird. It's, uh, I had to really run it and look through uh, the, 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 the matrix to see what is, what is it doing. But basically, with a single vector, if you have a matrix, you could actually select the single elements that you want from, from a vector, from, from, from a matrix. So this is what we have here on the left, subsetting with a single vector. We, we say we are selecting the fourth entry and the 15th entry. All you have to think about here is that when you're creating a matrix in R and you have uh, a sequence, it, it does it column-wise, right? And so, so that's what also the, um, yes, so that's what, that's what the count here 
for, for a single vector, substituting a single vector does. So it, it counts from first finish as a column, it goes to the next column and the next column. Yeah, uh, oh God, sorry. Yeah, but we can also actually uh, su uh, su supply the, the, the indices, the row and column in, uh, indices, as you see on, on, on the right, subset into the matrix, for example. But this matrix is supplying rows and columns. Um, hi, Alan. Yes. Um, so can you please go back to the previous slide? Yes. Yeah. So subsetting with a single vector, right? So um, four and five, means what? Does that mean the value at position four and the value at position 15? Yes, value are, are in uh, position four and value in position 15. So uh, here, okay, the value at position four is 16, right? What yes. about the value at position 15? Okay, it's 23, okay, yeah. uh, okay. Okay, so what about substating with the matrix? How does it work? So this one here is actually creating uh, indices, row, row, a combination of row and row, rows and columns. Okay, so here, uh, the matrix here, we are substating by two by two, mat three by two matrix? Uh, yes, yes, yes. But but you, you you can also think about it as uh, you each row represents a row and column, so, so row one and column one. Okay, row one, column one. Then yeah, that then is mean it means one. Row yes. three, column one, is uh, row three, column one, eleven. Row three. Yeah. Ah, okay. So I get you. Okay, cool. Great. Um, I, I'm, I'm about the 15 minutes, right? Okay. Um, what should we do? All right. So I'm, I'm going to try to rush through this. Uh, basically, everything we've done with the matrices and, and, and the lists is kind of going to be transferable to the data frames and tables. And uh, there's nothing here to see actually, apart from apart, apart from that. The only thing we, 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 we can we can note here is that uh, we can actually subset the, the the indices in a data frame. I mean the columns in a data frame using um, just one vector. So in this case, if you supply, uh, if you use a single block bracket, and inside it you put uh, a vector. Of for example, column names or a vector of, um, of, of the, the, the positions of the columns, then it returns only this, that, that those selected columns. Uh, here, I just put some examples, some things to, to, to try out and think about, but maybe we'll return to those later on. Uh, anyway, the, the other thing which is really important is preserving dimensionality. And th this is really, um, important because it causes a lot of errors when you're trying to do some, maybe like some functions and loops and things like that. So one thing to note is that um, if you have, uh, let me just go to the examples here. If you have a matrix or an array, any, if you subset and the, the result of the subsetting uh, results into a dimension of length one, then we're not going to return a matrix. We're going to return um, something lower than the matrix. In this case, uh, you have to correct me. I've been thinking out, I've been, I've been thinking out how to call this. Is this a vector? Oh, it's, it's a vector, right? Yes, yeah, so. yeah. But yeah, but anyway, basic point is not going to return a, a, a matrix. <laughs> it's a vector, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but, but anyway, uh, so that's one thing to note. So, it's, and this, this also goes to the, to the data frames. But the good thing is that we can, if we want to deal with, 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 uh, with uh, the, same, uh, the same data type, like a matrix, uh, we can always use this option, drop is equal to false. Though, then we retain a matrix, um, as, as you see down here. 
So, and this is the same idea when it goes to um, data frames. All right, so now the, the, the last thing is, uh, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to use a few slides. I'm not going to go through all the slides and I'll leave um, Shell to go through the rest. Maybe we'll do some exercises. Okay, now, how about selecting a uh, single element? We've been looking at selecting multiple elements or stuff like that and multiple, using how to select those and different data types. But okay, so here is more of like a small repetition uh, for, for what, what you've done. But one thing to note is that there are two other subsetting parameters, I mean operators here. And that is the double block bracket and the upper sign. Non all the time. Uh, the, the dollar sign. Uh, so the difference here is that um, if you have a single block bracket, it's kind of like on the outside. But when we want to go and select a specific element, we use the double um, block bracket. The only difference here is that uh, something really which, 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 which might be confusing uh, when it comes to the upper sign. The upper sign is normally common for selecting a, 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 a column. For example, if you're dealing with a named vector or a, a data frame with, with column names. So you normally use uh, that. But it's sort of like a shorthand uh, the upper sign is sort of like a shorthand to the double block bracket. So I'll finish this off by showing you this train. <laughs> so the, the train is uh, basically if you have a list, a, 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 three, a list with three elements, um, and the elements are seen as, as you see in the first diagram, which is the first element of list is one, two, three. The second element only has the character A. And the third um, element of the list has three numbers, or three digits, four, five, and six. So just to see how the single block bracket and, and the double block bracket are different, we have some examples. If you select uh, just with one single bracket, one single, one single block bracket, you're only going to select uh, the, the outside, the, the element, the top level element, or the first level element of that list. In this case, it's just the first element of the list, right? But what about if you want to see the elements of the elements of that first element of that list? Uh, then we go into the double uh, block bracket, as, as you could see here. So here, no, no, normally, what they did not show here is that if you want to select a one, this digit one, then you, use, you can use, uh, I believe you can use uh, another single block bracket or something like that. Um, okay, and lastly, uh, if, if you want to do more stuff, like uh, selecting more, more elements of that list, you could still supply it with a, uh, a, a vector, like one to two, for example. You could do uh, the negative selection and so on and, forth and, and so forth. And uh, this is just weird than a special case. Uh, if, if you have a repeated mm -hmm. index, what it does is just give you the same thing. I don't know how important that would be, but I guess it's useful sometime. Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll end with that. Uh, I think I'll pass on to, to Shell to continue. Or um, I don't know about when we shall do the exercises. But I think maybe Shell, Shell can continue first. And we'll see yeah, Shell, Shell should continue for you. But in the next okay. after that. Um, can you hear me well? Yes. Please give me yeah. the right to share my screen or can I? Mm. Right. You can see the slides? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So disclaimer number one, my the slides are on uh, my other screen so when i'm looking at the uh, screen on my right i'll be looking at the slides one too um as i had mentioned before i'm not really um actually let me see if i can bring the slides to the left ah um 
Okay, I think I'll work with this. And then, as I had mentioned before, uh, this was my first time working with Zaringan, so there are things that are weird um, for me. For now on, I think we are going to use whatever I have. I'm so grateful to uh, be going through this. I don't know if you can see from my slides that I have like 45 slides. I tried to minimize information and I wasn't able to, but also some of the slides are just incremental. So you can have like four in one, uh, but don't worry, we are going to rush over this. So, so I think we're still, we're still seeing your right screen. Um, oh, okay. So if you, um, if you stop sharing and then share again with that yeah. your screen. Thank you. Um, so, okay. Uh, what can you see? The slides now? Yeah. That's oh, great. yes, the slides. Okay. I don't know why they. Huh, no, I don't know which slides you're seeing, but okay, whichever. Um, Oh, okay. I'll use the ones on the right. Cool. So, as uh, can you see them changing? Incrementing. Yeah. Okay. So, as Alan had mentioned earlier, we decided to um, share this. So, he's presented the first part, which is section 4.1 to 4.3, and I'm going to take you through 4.4 to 4.5. 4.4 is actually something very small. Um, it talks about how you, when you give it, when you have, let's say, a vector, how you will um, replace maybe one value with another. And the basic form is just this, where i is like the position, um, the x i is equal to value. But what you need to make sure of is that whatever you're replacing with, like the length of the new vector or the new element or whatever, let's say the new vector, if you're dealing with a data frame, should be equal to the length of the um, original value. Otherwise, you're going to get um, such an error. Replacement has this and data has that. At the beginning, I used to get this error a lot and I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't understand what it meant. But every time I see replacement has this and data has this, it means that you're dealing with two vectors that are of a different um, size. So that's one thing we need to take care of. And also our I has to be unique because of some reason explained in the book. I'm not able to explain it um, right now. So 4.4 was just that. Um, from the whole of four point, um, oh yeah, and then there's also- Hello. Still on. Hello. Hello. Yeah, so Hello. Pre previous slide. Yeah, I have a question on the previous slide. Yep. What do you say about I is unique? Um, there's, a there's a description, definition given in the book. Um, if you don't mind, please check. Where they say if your I is not unique, there will be problems with repetition. Um, okay, okay, okay cool. Yeah, All right, okay. yeah, okay. And then they've talked about how you can um, remove components from a list. So I created a very a dummy list over here called departments that includes two um, departments that is data and operations. So, oops, okay, there's something wrong here. There was, um, oh, oh, what's going on here? At first, um, to remove a component, I had the third component before. So to remove it, you will just subset it using um, the index three and set it to null. So there needed to be something before, I'm sorry, about the first output, um, so that it's dropped for you to have data end um, operations. You can also add a, a null list um, or a list share. Ah, I see, I see what happens. This, the second output is as a result of adding a null um, list that is x i is equal to null. But anyway, as I had said before, my, there are some, Info, there's some information that is truncated at the bottom. I'm so sorry, I wasn't able to handle that. But yeah, um, this is all about how you can drop a list um, or include a new list, more information on um, the book. So this was the exact part of my presentation because um, at the beginning of chapter 4.5, um, the author writes that most of these 
functions have been embedded in the type diverse functions. And if you're used to using the type diverse, you'll know um, the verbs in the type diverse ecosystem are very smooth. Um, like you don't have to know much. But when I was going through um, this, which are around, I don't know how many, eight, eight examples in my head, I was like, oh, so this is what this function does. So I know the function may be in tidy verse, but then I believe this will, whatever we are going to cover will be like the back end of the tidy verse functions. So some of these things may not be applicable to date because I feel, um, especially given where you're using data with many columns and many rows, the tidy verse will work better. Um, I hope you can still hear me. My connection is flaky. Um, I'm sorry. So these are some of the examples we are going to look at. The first one, um, it's something that is used very much in Excel, lookup. Excel gurus always talk about lookup. I'm not an Excel guru. Um, but imagine you have a vector, um, like for example, what we have there, X, and you want to um, create, a, or, or rather you want to look up stuff in the X vector. So if you generate a vector called lookup where every M is a male and every F is a female, where every U is an A, and then as we've talked about vector indexation, in this lookup, you want to look for X. Um, this is what you will get. And for me, my question was, because this was a bit confusing at the beginning, is this the same as using an if-else function? Is it the same as saying wherever there is M, please replace with male. Wherever there is female, please replace with uh, whatever there is f replaced with female and u is an a is it the same thing because to me it looks like um the same and is it the same thing as saying look for x in the vector in this lookup look for x in this lookup i don't know sorry i'm talking too fast because of time but do you think it's the same as an if else function because now what you have is everywhere where there is m it gives us the label male where there's F, label female. Where there's U, it gives us a missing value. Um, for me, it looks like an if-else function. I don't see where I would have to use this. Um, but what do you think, based on what you can see? I think it's using the subsetting rules that, um, that Alan spoke about a bit earlier. That is, uh, we've got a named vector over here. So we've got lookup, that's a named vector with uh, M being the name for male. F being the name for female and U being the name for NA. So when we, we, when we index it using the X vector, it's then gonna be, it's gonna be matching based on the names. So I think that's what's going on. Um, in fact, you've actually got it in your next, in your next line um, when you got unnamed lookup of X where um, you just the, um, the, the the returned vector out uh, without the names, uh, which again uh, leads me to believe that yeah, it's those um, yeah. It's um, yeah. Does everybody is everybody okay with switching to the to the other Zoom so we have time to continue because this one is going to end in a minute or so. So I share the link in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just go okay. there if everybody's okay with that and we continue there. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sense. So assuming you have that data set, which is the same data set in the example, and you want <coughs> you want to duplicate the info um, so that we have a row for each value in grades. So as you can see, grades, um, the values in grades in the grades vector are the same values in the grade variable in the info data set, but then some are replicated. So what was happening um, over here is that you want to duplicate these rows based on the position of grades. For example, you can see um, the first element of grades is one, which is in this case position three. The second element is uh, two, which in this case is position two, two position two, um, three, position is position one and one is position three um, and with that if you see the ids um, first you had to get the ids you want to it's like you're asking what is the position of my grades 
my grades vector in the info extract grade variable in the grade variable so that's the vector then with that you subset so in the same position so you want the third the third row the second row the second row again the first row the third row again so for every duplicate um there is a point um, introduced so i would think if we wanted to replicate the second row that like three times we would have a 2.2 that's what i think i've not tried but yeah um i've never used the match function before but in my case in this case it kind of makes sense but also um and then in the book you're told where you have multiple columns you will need to think about using interse interaction um intersection not interaction or is it interaction one of the two i'm um, sorry but then there are um functions the join family functions in the deployer package that can help you work with this easily you don't <clears throat> you don't really have to do um the manual work um itself and again it goes back to what i was saying their base function which i think match is a base function and then these functions have been have been put or have been implemented in the child diverse uh, functions of verbs, which to me makes sense. And then the third um, example was uh, random samples and bootstrapping. So I know maybe most of us have used sample uh, n a lot just to generate a random permutation of one to n values. So I created a dummy variable, uh, a dummy data set. These are my people. This is our family. Um, I've not been home for a long time, so I just needed to feel um, closer to them. So I just created a data set of three variables. That is the names, uh, family member names, um, gender, and relationship. You can note um, I have a self there, myself there rather. So at this point, um, if we want to reorder the data frame random what do we do remember um when you have the data set name in my case df and the um square brackets anything to the left represents rows and anything to the right represents the right of the comma rather represents columns so if you sample n row n row n row of df in this case was five so if you sample five you would have a random um arrangement of the numbers one to five in any way uh, so let's say in this case not not let's say as you can see in this case it gave us like three five four two one so when you want to order the the data frame it will order in the same section in the same way so it's going to give you the third row the fifth row the fourth row the second row and the first row um if you want to select a random number of rows like not all of them so you as you can see in the first example we had to take all rows if you wanted to to select only a, a certain number of rows in my case i used two um, so that my information could fit in one slide so you do the same and remember um, the sample function has three or rather i use three functions in the sample function the first three three arguments in the sample function the first one is where are we um, selecting the sample from in this case it's number of rows of our data set the second one is how many um, values do you want to obtain in this case two and then you, sometimes you want to replace or just uh, not replace so replace equals true or false so in the second example i just used selected two um, without replacement and then the third sample where the third example where you want to select um, seven bootstrap um, replicates i would say replace is equal to true because the number of samples we want to generate in this case seven is even more than the number of rows um i've always wanted to read more about bootstrapping but i, I don't want to even start that conversation here because of time and i have uh, much to cover in i think 10 minutes so um for those of us who are not really sure about bootstrapping we can read about that um later then um there's this function called um ordering um order rather which is part of the integer subsetting so i created a vector of the family names where you want to order the family names you just use um order farm in this case it will order by alphabetical order so the first will be b then c then j s and t so trisa 
who, who happens to be my mom will be the last one in this case. You can also decide whether you want to order um, in increasing or decreasing order, uh, ascending or descending order, that is. So if you say descending is equal to true, it will start with the last and then um, end up with the first. Okay, so what you do, um, remember the, the, the output of order gives you the position itself. So that, that vector is what now you're going to input in your vector in order to get the exact um, ordering. Then um, when it comes to missing values, when you order by default, the missing values are put at the last part. But then if you, if you, if you include the argument any dot last is equal to false, they are given as the first one, which re reminds me, because I've been doing a lot of analysis at times, especially when you're working with survey data. Um, and I don't know whether our studio has this. I don't think it has, I would have seen. Sometimes I want to see the missing values in each of the variables in the R Studio pane, the data pane, when I view my data frame. So what would happen is when you click on the sorting thingy up there, it will sort, but then it will still keep the NAs uh, down. So my question there will be, if I want, you see where we have R Studio, the boxes where you can select the values you want to filter with. If I just want to see NAs, what will I input there? I don't know whether my question makes sense. If I want to only see the missing values in a certain variable on the window pane, uh, on the whatever, the R Studio window, without having to subset, because right now what I will do, I will create uh, another, another data set and say filter is dot na gender, for example. Yeah, then that's a good question. Yeah, so right now, because sometimes you just want to do something very fast and you don't want to keep, um, you don't want to keep generating more, more variable, more what? You don't want to keep generating more data sets. And then imagine you have a, let's say you have 50 variables and you want to see all them, like if there's at least a missing value somewhere. Um, I, 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 I always pray that, like I want to be able to go up there and click I want to see the missing values in this variable. Um, I think I that's the same as you. I do the Sorry? same thing. I, I create a, the same. I do the exact same thing as you. I create another data frame with those NAs and then uh, and then just view it. So I, I, yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> but maybe we can suggest to the R Studio team as a cohort. Cohort three says they want to see the missing values in the new R Studio. Uh -huh. I'll talk to mm. someone about it because at times you just want to see something very fast, like in Excel. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm playing yeah. around with it now and I, I'm just not finding a way to do it, uh, to tell you the truth. Uh, yeah. yeah, it would be but nice. I think they're short. Like, our studio has been evolving. There are problems used to have uh, a time of, some time ago that have been captured in the new release. So I think it's something we should um, put out there. Okay, and then also you, let's say you want to order, which is part of the questions we're going to be handling. You want to order the data set by, uh, by altering the rows and also altering the, what do you call them, columns. So again, whatever is on the left of the comma represent rows, right, represent columns. So here we are just sampling all the, um, the rows in a very random order and, um, some, and ordering um, the, the columns from the third one to the first. So if you remember the original data set had names, then gender, then relationship. So ordering starts with three, then two, then one. Then we have a case where you, which happens a lot. This happens a lot. Like most of the time in analysis, we never want to order the whole data set or sort out the whole data set at once. We, we want to order by, um, a certain variable. If you're dealing with transactional data, maybe we want to order the data set by the, the transaction date, the, by given like when, when someone uh, did their first transaction. So in that case, you will have um, order, DF, extract gender, which again will give you a vector of numbers, um, five, three, two, one, blah, blah, blah. And then you will use that to subset um, to give you this kind of behavior. So, and then to order the variables themselves, 
sorry, I keep getting uh, internet connection is not stable pop up here. So once it comes up, I have to keep quiet so that I don't lose you guys, but I think I'm back. Um, for you to order this, you, the variables um, themselves, you will use this and this will order by what do you call it alphabetical order which is really the case like we really want to order variables by alphabetical order sometimes you just want some variables um like the unique id the date and blah 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 at the beginning and then others later so oh. ah okay um um <laughs> can you arrange uh, with arrange multiplier can you arrange the column like this the one you did the arrangement of the columns the order here uh, to to arrange, so. no, mm -mm. to arrange the variables, you will use select. No, um, I don't know. Whether... Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think so. You you use select. Um, yeah. Uh, and reorder the the column names, the vector of the yeah. column names. Arrange will no, be. No, I mean to... the select. The select gives you opportunity to provide the way in which you want to order, right? But with this, you just order by name. You just, it automatically order them, you know what I mean? They are ordered. Select also orders for you. Select will also order for you. So if you put select A, B, C, then everything else, um, that works. That is no, if you don't want yeah. to order. What I'm saying is everything. with select, you need to provide the names of the variable. Here, you didn't provide the names of the variable individual, Sorry. you know what I mean? No, here the names of the variables are there actually. Uh, names, you're getting the, the names DF. Ah, okay, 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 I see, I see. So we, you can do with the same thing with the select as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I lost you for a minute there. My internet today is weird. Um, but are we together? Can we go on? Yes. Okay, uh, I know I'm, time is not on our side. Um, this is something that I was really wowed uh, by. Like, imagine you have a data set and you want to duplicate the rows by a given value. So for example, in the first case, we want to duplicate the data set by the value of N. So I want three, two nines, I want five, four elevens, I want one, one six. Sorry, I keep relating these functions to dplyr. So how will we do that in dplyr? I don't, I don't know how I will quickly do this because what, what they say here is you have to replicate, um, what do you call it? You have to replicate each row by the number of, by the value of n. So for example, one will be duplicated three times, two will be duplicated five times, three will be duplicated one time. And is there anything yeah. like duplicating one time? I don't know. So the rep function takes um, two arguments. The first argument is always, what are you replicating? So in this case, we want to replicate one, two, three. How many times are you replicating? So for each value on the left, uh, it has a matching value on the right. Um, rep also takes uh, one, like a scalar on the right. So let's say if you want to replicate one, two, three, five times, you will have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, five times. But then using now this, um, when you insert it over here, now your data is replicated, right? How would you do this in an easier way? Because I think someone once asked me how to do this and I don't think I was able to. Who knows of a way? No idea. And just, and just to bring to your attention, I, and I feel this is how, <laughs> this is an exciting um, thing I thought about. Someone should create a function that does this easily. And then we write to the tidyverse guys and ask them whether we can include our function as part of the deployer verbs, because I don't think there's a way you can do this um, right now, unless uh, unless we research. And please, if, if you come across it, just tell me, because it was, I think last month, someone asked me this. They were working with, they are good at Excel, and they asked me to do this in R, and I was like, oh my God, how do I do this? So to me, this was totally new um, information. 
And then um, removing columns from data, I'm thinking most of us know this, you can either set a column to null, um, which is what I normally do most of the time. You can also just subset using, um, if, you, if you know these are the columns you want, you can just include them in the subsetting code. But most of the time when you have data with a thousand variables and you just want, let's say, to anonymize the data, so you want to just drop, let's say, names, and for number and all that, you'll really use this because I don't think you have the time to create um, to create a vector of all the variables you need. So you can either use set the variables you don't want to use to null or to see to null, or use set diff. I have to I have to do what I have to accept or rather to state that I'm not a user of set diff a lot. Um, so here you set diff takes in two arguments. The first argument on the, la on the left is um, what's like the universal, um, I call it the basket, or like the basket of names. Um, where do you want to um, drop your variables from? So like the universal um, variables, that will be the names of the F. And then to the right, what do you want to drop or what do you want to remove or what do you want to pluck from the resulting uh, vector? So I call that to keep. And then when you use to keep, um, when you subtract using the vector to keep, you only get the variables you want to keep having dropped gender. Um, do I have more minutes? I, I can say say 30, but can I have like five more? I will wrap, I will be fast. You sure? Okay, thank you. So selecting rows, this is something, and apologies for anyone who feels left out when I say this is something we use a lot. Um, I hope everyone has used this once in a while um, before we even got to tidyverse. This is how I had been um, filtering. So I have this small package I had created. Um, I wanted to learn how to create packages. And then um, it, I also needed data to teach you that had a combination of numeric values and um, what do you call it? Categorical variables. So Wapanyikazi is just a Swahili name for employees. So it gives you uh, different variables, different information about certain employees in a very hypothetical company. Um, so the first example I gave here was um, selecting juniors. So what this will give you, it will give you like a bullying vector. So wherever someone is a junior, it will be true. And wherever someone is uh, not a junior, it will be false. And that's why this is called logical subsetting because they say that true, false, true, false. And then when you insert that into the subsetting part of, like, when you want to subset that from the data frame, it only gives you the truth. When I was a junior, when I was a novice using R, I remember asking my manager, why is it giving me truth and not just false? Um, that's the thing. So once you subset, it only gives you the true part of that. It doesn't give you the... <laughs> The false. I know that was kind of a lame question, but anyway, here we are. Then I also gave another example. In Kenya, we have counties, which are the next, um, um, which are the first administrative level. I come from Yeri County, and I'm a female. I always like giving this example because it represents me. So um, you 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 will use um, what do you call this? And ampersand, yeah, to select rows where the respondents are females and are also from um, Yeri County. Remember we are selecting rows so anything to the right of the comma will be blank because we want all to select all the columns. Then there's also a part that says um, and this is something which is very very tricky it can give you different results where you want to subset using such a case maybe not in x and not in Y, like if I would read it out loud, not in X and not in Y, you would use an or. So when I want to use negation of two variables, I don't, you're not a female and you're not a, you're not a female and you're not, you don't live in Yeri County. You have to use or, and this is something I had to learn through experience. I, I don't think I will explain why I was not very good with linear algebra i think this is linear algebra i saw this and i was like wow we we would we would come to use some <laughs> some things we learned in linear algebra later in life but um sorry i don't know how to explain all this I
I can't remember. Moving on, um, the use of which. So in the book, um, Hartley says there are two ways of subsetting, which is integer subsetting using set operations and logical subsetting using uh, Boolean algebra. I use which a lot, especially when you merge in two data sets and um, let's say one data set has names in a different format than another data set. You, you might find yourself using which a lot and the resulting um, value you would want is zero, especially when you want to say which names are not in the second um, data set. So which is such a very good, um, a very good function. Then later in the book, um, the author says that you can create, you can, so let me take you back one minute. You can use which, which allows you to convert a Boolean representation to an integer representation. So if you would just run this, which names, remember my data set of my family members, which names are in John, we only have one John in that data set. So if you just run whatever I've highlighted in blue, that will give you a true. But then when you use which, it converts that true, which is a Boolean representation to an integer uh, representation. Then um, he says you can also do reverse. You can, you can, you can convert an um, integer into a Boolean representation. I find this a bit complex um, and I don't really know why we need to do this, but I think he needed to just insist on the part of converting an um, integer representation to Boolean. Because for me, if I just wanted to see the Boolean part, I would just um, run that. So you'll see from my slides, I'm asking, like, I don't know why we need to do this. So I didn't really bother because um, I know just running whatever is inside the which function still gives us the same um, value. Then um, there is this part, which I, I won't dwell into much. Um, he was just talking about the relationship between Boolean and set operations. So here, what, what uh, we did, we created two logical vectors, that is x1 and y1, and two, lo and two integer vectors. Um, remember, when you use which, you're converting a Boolean representation into an integer representation. So here, we are creating a vector asking which numbers between 1 and 10, when you divide by 2, the remainder is 0. That will be the even numbers. So in your head, you already know 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. But then just running this part, it gives you a Boolean um, representation. So one will be false, two will be true, three will be false, and so on. And then again, which numbers divided by five will give you a remainder of zero? That's, this is modulus. Um, again, you have five and 10. So I have to admit, I have never ever, oh, I have once but I'm not a fan of using set operations in R. Uh, I've never found myself like really, really needing to use um, set operations, but you can either say like, for example, if you want to look at the intersection, which values are in both X1 and Y1 and to keep something in your head, X1 is two, four, six, eight, ten. That is the, in the, 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 what? the even numbers between one and 10. And Y1 are the numbers um, that are divided by five without having a remainder that's five and 10. So which of which number is, which numbers are in both? That will be 10. So you, if you want a Boolean output, you would have that. Um, and if you want, a, what do you call it? An integer representation, you will use the set operations. So for Boolean, we'll have Y1 and X1. Uh, for the set operations, we'll use the, the X2 and Y2 values. Then union, which numbers are in both X1 and Y1 or X2 and Y2. Um, and you just combine all the numbers. So you'll have two, four, six, eight, which are the even numbers and also 10, five, which are the results of Y2. Then set difference, again, which values like from X2, remove the Y2s. So X2, um, the value, the number that is in Y2 and X2 is only 10. So once you pluck that out, you will just be left with what is in um, X2. And then I've never seen this function in R. I've, not, I've actually no, never tried it. But it, from the union of X2 and Y2, which is just 2, 4, 6, 8, 5, 10, uh, remove the numbers that are, intersection, that are at the intersection, which is just 10 you will be left with two, four, six, eight, um, five. 
So yeah, sorry for rushing that out. I don't know who uses, I don't know who amongst us uses uh, set operations a lot. I would love to hear about that um, and in what capacity or why, why, what's the question? When do you think we will be forced to use the set operations? Uh, we can't see the Hello. You're Hello. Back. Oh, thank you. I hope you've not lost me for a lot of minutes. Um um, exercises, how will you randomly permute the columns of a data frame? This is an important technique in random forest. Can you sim simultaneously permute the rows and columns in one step? So to, to answer um, this, I used the data set I was talking about, the Wafanyikazi data set. I just um, displayed the first three rows because of space. Then um, how can we permute the columns, that's the idea I had. Just sampling, uh, I don't know, names. Um, and permutate is all about organizing. So organizing them in a different way. So for example, if our names were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so there's something that is truncated. Um, oh, sorry. And there's something that is truncated over here, but it's just organizing the columns in a random way. This is what you would have. If you repeated this code again, it will give you a different organization uh, or order because um, it's, it's random. So this is what I will do. I don't know what other people have in mind. Um, then again, to my permutate both rows and columns, this is the idea I had. Just the same thing we've done with sampling, the number of column names. I think we will do that with the number of rows. Again, I have only displayed three. Um, so this will give you a data set where the rows are um, differently ordered. Uh, yeah, sorry, we don't have time to like sit down and breathe. So I'll just go through the next two examples and then we can discuss if we have time. How will you select a random sample of M rows from a data frame? What if the sample had to be that, that is with an initial row a final row and every row in between. So how did I interpret this question? My data set has 500 rows. So in my head, I, was, I thought, are they saying that order your, or rather reshuffle your data, the rows of your data, but make sure that the first row is the first, the last row is the last, anything in between can be in any order. Um, that's how I interpreted. So there are very many ways of killing a rat and Mine may be long, but I think it works eventually. So if anyone has an easier way of um, representing this, I will be happy to know. So what I did first, I generated a vector of my first and last row IDs. So the first is one, the last one is 500 because my rows, my data set has 500 rows. And then what I did, I generated other, um, other values, but then I wanted to sample only those that are not in my first and last rows. So take my original IDs, that is one to 500, and pick IDs that are not in one and 500. So anything else that is not one and 500, that will, subtract, will deduct the two. And then from there, just sample two, I used two as my M, just sample two out of that. So we will have for 76 and 123. Then create now your final ID. So my first will all, all, always be first. My last will always be 500. Whatever is in between can change. And I ordered this manually myself. So my first, um, any other in between and my last. And then use that to subset. Again, the end justifies the means. I don't know if I misinterpreted the question. I don't know if I did this in a long way, but um, to me, that works. So my first row will always be the first. The last row will always be the last. Anything else in between can change. The last question, how could you, how could you put the columns in a data frame in an alphabetical order? 
I think that's just order. because when you order a character vector, it just gives them, it, the output is a vector in alphabetical order. So as you can see, these are organized in alphabetical order. The end. <laughs> that's all I had. I'm sorry I have wrapped uh, through. We are going to share our material later, not maybe after this call. But yeah, I'm happy to hear anyone who had, especially the questions. I answered these questions the way I thought. I didn't even think much to them. But maybe if there is something that was covered in the book and I should have implemented it, I will be happy to hear about it. Yeah, 